What up guys, Dredgehells here and welcome back to World of Tanks. I hope all of you guys are doing well and having a good start to your week. Today we're going to be looking at a game that I had in my WZ131 on the new Paris map, the map that was released in patch 9.16. And uh, this is the first ace tanker that I've ever had on Paris map, and so I figured I should... Uh, uh, make a video of it and so you guys can see kind of how this uh, map is playing out currently in pub battles and uh, I haven't shown any actual footage uh, of this map uh, on my channel yet other than a review uh, that I made uh, a while back uh, driving around on the test server and checking out different angles and seeing how they interact and whatnot uh, if you guys uh, might be interested in watching that review you can uh, go ahead and click the um, the eye icon on the top right hand corner of the screen and that will take you to the link uh, for the video of the review that I made for this map. Uh, but yeah, this is the first ace tanker that I've had on this map so uh, that was uh, fun to get. And uh, just looking at the team comps real quick before we get started here. Um, uh, tier 8 games, so we're top tier technically as we are a tier 7 scout so we get matched up like a tier 8 tank. Um, the uh, key difference here between my team and the enemy team is that they actually have several more tier 8s than we do so they have more HP also in their top tiers more armor uh, the, with their tier 8 heavy tanks as opposed to our, our tier 8 medium tanks although the super pushing is basically a heavy even though it's classified as a medium but uh, it has armor and uh, that's kind of the role that it plays um, and uh, before I start rambling on too much uh, let's just get started Uh, my initial uh, thoughts on the Paris map, uh, I like it for the most part. Um, I like the, the different angles, the difference in angles as this map is kind of a spoke wheel. If you look at the center of the map, you can see that uh, a lot of the angles go out diagonally in different directions. So it's kind of a spoke wheel type map instead of a very linear, uh, linear parallel map like uh, for example Tundra or Stalingrad where all the angles are exactly in the same direction which is kind of annoying on those maps. Get a nice shot into the T-21 there early and the Ferdinand uh, behind me is able to uh, secure the kill and uh, get to one of their mobile tanks down early which helps me immensely. Uh, so far, I like using this uh, position here in B7 to spot the, uh, spot the north field area. Uh, you have eyes there where I was looking, there in C3 on the corner of the building there, and uh, directly in front of me of where the enemy T-71 is currently. And also you have some eyes down to this A line here. Now that I know that uh, most of their mobile tanks are dead, I am confident I can move up here. And uh, I have a lot of sniper support behind me, so I'm confident that uh, as long as I stay in cover behind uh, the, the dune here right in front of me and uh, just keep working on this uh, enemy T-43, that uh, if any of, uh, of the other enemy players decide to try and push me, that I will have lots of sniper backup. Uh, a little bit of an elevation difference here between me and uh, where the t enemy T-43 is currently. Still working on uh, uh, the different angles of the map and how they work out, but uh, he was far too aggressive. Waiting a little bit for, uh, for my spot to drop as I was spotted by the enemy T-43. And uh, carefully peek the corner there and we find a Tiger 88. Doing it really careful, uh, one of the things that I don't like about Paris currently is that uh, I believe oh, the shot goes a little high there unfortunately uh, is that the the map is a little bit small in uh, my opinion I, I think it's okay for tier 8 but uh, for tier 9 and tier 10 games I think this map is too small I think Wargaming should have made a larger version of this map for the higher tiers uh, because uh, the, the view range um, uh, advantages of the different classes doesn't really matter uh, when you get into that those high tiers. It's kind of the same problem that you run into on mines in uh, tier 10 games. And uh, we spot the the KV3 there crossing there into the uh, the 
kind of the center uh, gap area. Really, really bad uh, old man reaction shot there. I was thinking that he was going to uh, continue driving forward, but uh, uh, I got out juked by the puppy shuffle. And uh, the snipers and the artillery on my team are doing really good work there uh, and uh, secure the kill on the KV-3. Once again, waiting for my spots to drop before I uh, relocate. It's always a really good idea to wait. Um, try to surprise the enemy, enemy any way you can, whatever tank that you're driving, and the best uh, one of the ways to do that is to wait until you're unspotted before you start um, moving in another direction or moving to a different position so the enemy uh, uh, doesn't have a good chance to anticipate where you're going to be next. Kind of a misplay there, rolling up a little too high on that dune. Uh, completely unnecessary, actually. Um, I could have just poked up here in the bushes, and I would have been uh, unspotted and fine, and, I've actu and I could have actually uh, shot the ISU-152 once. But uh, I get them both spotted, and uh, our team are able to take them out. Now that we've secured the north uh, part of the map, now it's uh, time to start shifting over to the center and try to start encapsulating uh, the forces of the enemy team there in the south. Uh, kind of have to be careful here a little bit and I, I'm probably being way too aggressive here, uh, completely underestimating uh, the how close the enemy is, still getting used to this map, still getting used to the different angles on this map. And uh, four of the five remaining tanks on the enemy team are tier 8 and top tier, so uh, this game isn't in the bag yet, even though we're ahead by two tanks. Our Scorpion G decides to start capping uh, to force the enemy to react. Uh, right now, get really surprised by the enemy SU-122-44, uh, and now I'm trapped. Uh, I can't move back into cover without getting shot. And uh, the three t teammates on uh, on my uh, kind of the E5, E6 area, I, I was hoping for some support, but they are just sitting there, uh, not uh, moving up to support me. So unfortunately, I get shot by the SU-44, and my situational awareness uh, gets me shot. Unfortunately, a lack of situational awareness uh, gets me shot by the uh, KV-4. But for some weird reason, the SU-122-44 decides to run away. I have no idea why. He had me dead to rights and uh, could have easily killed me there as I was pinned and trapped in the center. Kind of a really bad uh, spot of the map for me to go in. Now I'm moving to flank the enemy IS-3 and put him in a pinzer between m myself and the Scorpion G on my team. And our uh, Scorpion G puts one shot into him, which uh, puts him the IS-3 down on low enough health to where I can take him out in a couple shots. Uh, as he was completely ignoring me, I was able to take my time and aim those shots. Now uh, looking for the other opportunity to create another pinzer here, and now shifting to the south side of the map. Always be looking for a way to uh, multiply the angles of engagement on your enemy, especially uh, uh, in, in any tank that you're playing, but especially in mobile tanks, is that is their strength. Uh, the IS-6 is not looking at me currently, uh, but uh, I gotta uh, keep an eye on this uh, KV-4 as he is looking like he's trying to relocate and shift and push me off this corner where I'm at currently. And that's exactly what he does. So uh, we get to two shots into the back of the IS-6. And uh, we're not going to push our luck there. Uh, the KV-4 would have a shot on us if we remain there for a third shot. So now, uh, now I'm relocating again, shifting away from the push of the enemy. And uh, shifting back up to the north here. Our Scorpion G stops capping, uh, which... Uh, it's probably a good idea. He can't fight both of those heavies there and, and live. He doesn't have enough HP currently. Not sure if I spotted that or if the Scorpion G spotted that as we were cr crossing the center here. Uh, this is the first time I've noticed that uh, you can use these bushes to spot down those diagonal streets. Uh, I didn't see that before earlier when I was uh, driving around on the test server. So that's uh, an interesting location to use in the late game. 
And now that I see that our Scorpion G is kind of trapped there in H2, I'm trying to peek and poke, making sure that the I6 is not coming back up this uh, uh, vertical center road here that's kind of a neutral road, a free-for-all fight uh, in the early game for whichever team controls this. Uh, rolling the dice here, uh, seeing that the IS-6 was last spotted moving towards the west and uh, uh, taking the gamble that he's still doing that, and he is. Get a nice shot into the back of the IS-6 here. And uh, I think he's tracked, or I knocked out his engine. Take the snapshot there, just as I'm uh, pulling back into cover of the uh, the, the, the column here, uh, as the IS-6 almost had his gun fully traversed around on me, and I didn't want to risk getting shot. And the uh, Scorpion G uh, is able to take advantage of the IS-6, was trapped between me and uh, and him and uh, was able to uh, uh, secure the kill and uh, once again taking advantage of the multiple angles of engagement right uh, so my initial uh, thoughts on this map are pretty good I think it's uh, I like that there's another map in the map rotation period uh, um, there's been quite a few maps uh, removed from the rotation in the last year year and a half um, and uh, kind of coming down to a limited selection of maps, so it's nice to see actually see something different, uh, whatever it is. Um, and I think this map is pretty decent so far as what I played it. Uh, I have to reserve uh, total total judgment on it until I played it some more in some pub games. Uh, but uh, for the most part, it looks like it's uh, it's looks like it's a fairly balanced map. It's pretty much completely symmetrical. Uh, there's a little bit of something to do for everybody. Um, uh, kind of on the north side of the field, you kind of have your view range camo rating snipers uh, uh, type tanks, and then you have your uh, intermediary uh, uh, sniping areas in kind of this this cross section here, where these diagonal streets X right here on the on the E F G lines, and then you have your uh, stereotypical. A brawl area here in the south on um, the bridge where I'm sitting at currently interestingly enough uh, how the south works is that it's actually works like a figure eight um, you can actually cross down the street go up underneath the bridge like this and come up so that's kind of a, a, a unique uh, angle that I don't think I've seen uh, on too many of the other maps that Wargaming have designed uh, but yeah once again uh, the only uh, thing that uh, I don't really like about this map uh, so far is that it's, in my opinion, a little too small, uh, definitely for the higher tiers, and uh, maybe potentially down the road, wargaming should consider uh, making various different sizes of 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 maps, and uh, and that way uh, they can scale it to the tier, and that way uh, the different tank roles, whether it be vision or armor or firepower, uh, mobility. Um, they stay still relevant um, because in a small map um, those roles get uh, blurred and it's uh, mostly an advantage to the tanks with high alpha and armor. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, before I start rambling too much, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching uh, this Ace Tanker game, the first Ace that I've had on uh, Paris, uh, the new Paris map. Uh, and uh, hopefully it gives you a little bit of an idea on how the meta of this map is starting to uh, work itself out in pub games. Uh, wish you guys the best of luck out there in uh, your matches on the new Paris map. Uh, good hunting and take care.